Sukkot, unbelievable holiday. The holiday which is called the time of our happiness. Rejoice, excitement. Let's ask some questions here. Is a condition for happiness is lack of pain and misery? Why Sukkot specifically is called Chag Simchatenu, the holy day of our happiness, not Shvuot that we accept the Torah, Pesach we got out of Egypt. What's the case here? Another question, why we read Kohelet that Shlomo HaMelech wrote specifically on Sukkot and not in different holiday? There's other shame we're going to try to answer on these questions in the shiur. It's good idea to stay until the end. In the parasha, in the Holy Torah, in the rebuke words, parashat kitavo, uh, there are mentions like horrible cor courses and trouble, mischief and pain that will come, bar minan, on Klal Israel. And it was written there, free translation. And all these curses are going to come upon you. And they're going to run after you and reach you. Why? Since you didn't serve God in happiness and with rejoiced heart from all the things he gave you. And we need to put a very serious attention here that he didn't say that the problems, mischief, affliction, curses is going to come because only we left the Torah. But even if all the mitzvot, all the commandments are going to be fulfilled, but not from happiness, you're going to get it in your head. And we learned here that the obligation of happiness, while fulfilling the commandments, it's an obligation. And more, more than that, it seems that we are obligated to be happy in our life. Non-stop, doesn't make a difference what's happy, what, what happening. And specifically, in Chag Sukkot, as it says, you should rejoice in your holiday, and that speaks about Sukkot. And the next Pasuk, it's continued there, that the happiness, it's not something specific to yourself, selfish, but rather you, your son, your daughter, your slave, your maidservant, the Levi, the Ger, an orphan, which around you, and it's point and teach that a person is obligated to bring happiness to his, hap to his family, to all the surrounding around him, even if it's not really connected to him. And the next, later on in the Pasuk, it says, Vaita Ach Sameach should be only happy. And, and it's very big wonder and a question. How can you command on a person, be happy? Especially if you're familiar with the words of the Gaon Vilna, that's actually died in Sukkot, Yutet Betishrei. And he said that the hardest mitzvah in Sukkot for him is the mitzvah to be happy. All the other mitzvot, he said, they're physical mitzvot. You sit in the sukkah, you're shaking the arba taminim, but happiness, true, real happiness, need to come from your heart. In order it should be true and strong happiness. And to reach to this point, it's not so simple. And maybe we can find a hint to the answer in the words of Rabbi Israelish in Shulchan Aruch. He opened Shulchan Aruch Or Chaim in the words, Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tamid. I should always visualize the name of Hashem or God itself in front of me. And he finished that part of Shulchan Aruch in the Alachot of Purim and he said, Vetov Lev Mishte Tamid. A non stop good heart happiness with a fist. And we see that the word Tamid always come twice, in the beginning of Shulchan Aruch, Sheviti Hashem Lenegdi, Tamid, always, and at the end, Tov Lev Mishte Tamid, always. And it was hinting to the two sacrifices of Tmidim, as it says, and the two sacrifices of Tmidim should be properly, non blemished. you should do it in the right way. That's mean, to our point here, a person who's gonna be able to fulfill correctly Truthfully, the beginning of Shulchan Aruch, Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tamid, I visualize God in front of me, always going to merit that the second always of good heart in a good fist happiness going to go with him all his life. 
אקזקטלי, דוד המלך wrote in תהילים, שיוויתי אדוני לנגדי תמיד, and that's why, לכן, because of that, my heart rejoice, and my heart honor is so happy to teach that both depends on one another. Exactly as the magnitude, the size of the closeness of Hashem, that's how it's going to be the feeling and the strength of happiness. And for sure, after Rosh Hashanah we just passed, Yom Kippur, we anant, we put our God as our king, we come close to him, do tshuva, repent, hopefully. Such a holy day, it's unbelievable. For sure right now there's extra happiness for Chag Sukkot naturally should burst from us. There are some people that are a little bit confused, delirious. They don't realize that Judaism and the life of Torah and commandments, it's not cause a person only to have the next world life, but rather this life right now, in order to have true happiness, in this life, we are obligated to fulfill all the mitzvot and commandments, but again with happiness. And those delirious and uh, confused guys are as, are as an example of a child playing in the mud. He's so happy, getting dirty, all his clothes, all his hair. And the parents try to take him out and come out, what are you doing? And he's looking at them, wow, you're crazy, it's so happy, come on, this is the best thing in life. For sure. He's a child, but are we children also? For what we choose to be happy in life. We can do many things and actions that show happiness. Play, music, dance, get wild! But bottom line, it's not true happiness. It's called create happiness, make things happy. This is not an inner happiness. The days of the holiday of Sukkot, Chag Sukkot, it's not days that we do acts of happiness, but rather though those days are essence is inner bursting happiness, true happiness. And this is exactly as the happiness that we need to fulfill and feel, sorry, when we fulfill all the commandments in all our life from beginning to the end. We're going to bring a true story that's happened. A person came to the shul of Rabbi Kaminetsky, Zichon Levracha. All the davening, he stood, didn't say a word, didn't daven. Psh quiet. After the davening, the rabbi came to him, asked him how he's feeling, where he's coming from, and he asked him why he didn't uh, join the davening. The Jew looked at him and said, I, I don't know how to daven. The rabbi uh, asked uh, in a big wonder, uh, but I saw that you didn't say also Kriyat Shema. You don't, what about it? And the Jew say, I don't have a clue from the beginning to the end of the davening, Kriyat Shema. I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I don't know. The rabbi asked him, <clears throat> is there anything that you can say from the Holy Torah, something? And he said, I'm familiar with a couple of psukim. The rabbi asked him, can you tell me them? I'm going to bring again a free translation here. And he said, since you didn't serve Hashem your God with happiness and good heart from all the good he gave you, you will serve your enemies that Hashem is going to send upon you with starvation, thirst, nakedness, and with having nothing. The Rav was shocked. He looked at him, how can it be that a Jew that is not familiar with any part of davening, anything of Judaism, doesn't know to say Shema Yisrael? How come he can say straightforward, correctly, this two psukim from the rebuke words in the Holy Torah that very few know how to correctly say it or try to avoid saying it. How do you know this psukim? Where did you hear? Where, where did you learn it? Where did you hear from them? The Jew said, Rabbi, in the Second World War, I was in Auschwitz. It was horrible. They slaved us. There was so many affliction, death, unbearable. There was a Jew with us. To him, the Nazim, their memory should be erased by Zad Hashem. They put the extra attention upon him. They let him do hard things, unbelievable. Put tons of rocks upon him. 
while beating him up and his need to run from one side to another for no reason. And any t every time that he came across us, hundreds of times, we heard him saying, non-stop this psukim, since you didn't serve your God from happiness, you're going to serve your enemies. Until these psukim are engraved in our hearts and souls. Rabbi Kamenetsky was so excited. He asked him, wow, this is an amazing story. Do you remember the name of this Jew that repeat this psukim while all this affliction and torture? And the answer was the rabbi from Klesenburg. He lost in the Holocaust his wife and 11 kids, 11 children that were murdered by the Nazi Mimachshmam. And he's the one who repeat this psukim. Since you didn't serve God in happiness, that's why everything is happening. The Holy Torah demand from us to serve God in happiness and it's wrong that's all the mischief in the universe that was written and the problem and the curses in the rebuke words are as a result that we, Chas Khalila, not serve God from true happiness. Let's try to understand. <clears throat> what caused a person to lose happiness? Many people, majority, are going to say, when a person is in pain, he cannot be happy. But bottom line, we can brush this answer very easily. Let's see. A lady, labor, giving birth, pain for hours, screaming, a pitura, ah, A second after she gave birth, she's in pain. Unbelievable what's going on, what she passed. Baruch Hashem, that we're not women, right? They show her the baby. He just came out to the world. They led her to hold it. She's so happy and excited. She, she cried from happiness. So you see, she's still in pain and agony, but it's not contradict true happiness. Another, another example in, in the same concept. The person, Bao Minan, they found certain growth in his stomach. Very, very, very serious worry. It's cancer of Balminan, and who knows where it's already spread. He's going under a surgery, very hard surgery. They cut him open, taking the pieces out. Nobody should have this kind of stuff. When he wake up from the anesthesia, he's still in pain from all the stuff he passed right now. You see the doctor standing near him, smiling, say to him, congratulations. The guy look at him. A little bit still under the anesthesia, doesn't have a clue what's going on. And the doctor explained to him, there is no worry from the growth. It was not cancer, there is no spreading, there is no risk for anything in the future in your life from that scenario. The person cry from happiness. If you could be to jump and dance and hug the doctor, he would do it, even though he's in anguish and pain. So we see again, <clears throat> there's no connection between pain, chas v'chalila, to happiness or lack of happiness. So what caused a person to lose his happiness in life? Lack of security. Doubt from the future of what's going to be. And a person that's believed with no doubt in God, he himself doesn't have any question mark, doesn't have doubts, and that's why he can be really happy in his life. True happiness all his life, ups, downs, chas v'chalila, doesn't make a difference. We're familiar with the words of the Gemara in Masechet Makot that few rabbis went near the Bet Amikdash, destroyed temple, and they saw a fax coming out of the Holy of the Holy, Kodesh Kodashim. They start crying. Rabbi Akiva was with them. He started to laugh. What? Rabbi Akiva didn't feel pain from seeing a fax going out from the place that Kohen Gadol, high priest, would go one year, Yom Kippur, in and out, hopefully, and a fax going there freely? He, what, he's less sensitive from the other rabbi that's crying? For sure not. But, exactly as he explained, Rabbi Akiva, that if the prophecy about the facts coming out, 
fox walking around in the Bet Amigdash, Kodesh Kodashim, if that was fulfilled, for sure that also the prophecy on the redemption is going to fulfill itself also, and this faith brought him to happiness. We're going to strengthen our concept here from example from life. Amusement park, Luna Park, there's roller coasters. Some of them psh, accelerate like unbelievable, crazy speed, a height of hundreds of feet, crazy turns upside down between earth and uh, who knows what's going on there. People doesn't uh, give, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> when a person is on the ride, he scream like nuts, but still he's so happy and excited. How come the fear not paralyze them? Why? Because there is no, they know that they're a control center. Somebody sitting near the computers, screens, to make sure that everything is running with no problems. And God forbid, if there's going to be any problem, everything's going to be stopped and they're going to get secured out safely from the train. Roller coaster. So how come we should ask in the roller coaster, a person doesn't have any worry to his life and it is not stuck in unhappiness mode, but in his life, a person can be full with worries, fears that's causing to lack of happiness. And the answer is very simple. He's missing faith. Any person, any one of us that's going to go with true faith, there is no reason for fear and worry. Doesn't make a difference what's going on, we are happy. We know that there is supervision above us and the person who's running the show, navigating the plan, the roller coaster of life is God. And he knows what he's doing. For sure it's a very high, high level. And God forbid nobody from Klal Israel should have any tests or problems. But this level is a commitment and committing us. We obligated to reach it. Exactly as we mentioned already many times before in this lesson, the words of the Holy Torah. Since you didn't serve God in happiness, you're going to serve your enemy. We know that in this world, so to say, the halacha, the rules of how we should fulfill the commandments, is as Bet Hillel. In the future to come, as Bet Shammai. What the base in simplicity should be of the debate, the di dispute between them. How a person should govern his life and run his life after the sin of Adam Arishon, the golden calf, the spies in the desert. How we should run our life. Bet Shammai claim that a person need to try to disconnect from physicality and it's mention and hint in his name, Shammai, from the name of Shammai, sky, heaven, spiritual. Betile claim, yeah, you are right, but this is only for very few people. Most of the people need to be purified within the physicality. Hillel, Mileshon, Kol Talelka. Within all our soul, all our physicality and body, we need to praise God with our actions. And as we said already, halacha right now is as Bet Hillel. As the Biur Halacha wrote in, on the words of Shulchan Aruch, any Torah that doesn't have labor with it, at the end, gonna be cancelled and bring sin. And the Biur Halacha explained that the Sfarim wrote, the Holy Sfarim books wrote, that this was written, okay, to the whole world. But not everybody able to reach this point, to deal only in the Torah and with true happiness. But few people can reach this point and live all their life in that level. And we're going to bring the words of Rabban Shibon de Gamliel. Each one of us should make himself as a scholar and act like that. In Chag Sukkot, we are accustomed as Bet Shammai, even though all around is Bet Hillel. Let's bring the understanding here. We know that Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai disagree 
if a person fulfilled the commandment of sitting in the sukkah while his head and majority of the body inside or is also obligated to have his table in the sukkah also and if the table is not inside he didn't fulfill mitzvah no sukkah all his life and halacha is as bet shamay that you are obligated to have your head majority of the body and the table that you eat on in the sukkah and the sukkah surrounding spiritual light as the shade of faith spiritual world and down there or up there in the sukkah all the physicality and spirituality going higher and when you are on this kind of level when you disconnect from the physicality and all the craziness and styles around you you see how God run the world in kindness and everything is measurement for measurement everything is for good all our life become easier it's easier to be happy in life no worries as we know that the letter bet that's hint to bitachon trust is not shown in the word daga worry <clears throat> a person who's living in true faith in a shameless is he he's non stop happy no worries because everything is under control of the Almighty and he created the world he know how to run it we asked before why we read Kohelet in Sukkot Kohelet Shlomo HaMelech wrote it he started it and he ending it that this world is full with futiles everything is baloney and in Sukkot we live in our house AC system surround music system unbelievable recliners and we go we staying in the sukkah casual dwelling to disconnect of the connection and the surrounding around us the physicality and all the styles and what we think give us happiness and actually it's illusion of happiness faith is a basic obligated fundamental foundation in our life faith is the tool that's in it we put the truth the truth of life is the holy torah emuna the root of the word is amen amen numerical value 91 91 is the numerical value of the two names of havaya and adnut 91 is the numerical value of the word sukkah. Sukkah surrounding the entire person. Guards and release from the futiles and nonsense of the physical world that we live in. In Sukkot, we do hakafot surrounding around the bima on it. The holy Sefer Torah scroll is on. This hakafot is circles. A circle doesn't have sort of edges, angles. The end is actually the beginning. Total perfect scenario here. What happened when the circle is completed? When you're coming back to the beginning point, so to say, some say zero angle uh, degree, some say 360, same thing. You're coming back to the point you started but with the understanding of everything that's happening in our life everything retroactive become clear all of a sudden what we thought was negative is found as positive and obligated to happen in order that we're going to be able to reach and the world around us perfection of spirituality and physicality as the navi shayao said and you would say on that day thank you God that you sort of punished me and the explanation is that in the days of Mashiach Be'ezat Hashem full redemption when we Klal Israel, gonna see all the mischief trouble pain exile disaster tests this year was horrible and we hope this year 
not going to be the same. It depends on us. But we're going to realize that all the mischief that we thought is mischief is only because of our sins in order to cleanse us, to merit us, to gain the total perfection and the true kindness and good and happiness in the universe. Be'ezat Hashem, we're going to end and in a beautiful idea that each one of us should take home. The schach, the top of the sukkah, is the highest point of the sukkah. It's made usually from uh, rubbish and branches, left of I don't know what, things that, uh, you know, people throw usually, right? And it's a very strong strengthening to each one of us to teach us in the future to come, but better now than later, and also a person that fell and is not happy and is missing faith is able to reach the most height exactly as the schach of the sukkah and the way to do it is by true belief faith and trust and not less true happiness while doing the commandments and in all our life doesn't make a difference up and down always be happy Be'ezat Hashem and by that we're going to be able with this happiness to prevent now already all the trouble that's come on Klal Israel and the world as it says when the troubles come God forbid when you serve God with lack of happiness from all the good he gave you and the good sometimes we don't realize it is good like a person who go to the dentist but it is for his benefit Be'ezat Hashem, we should be all married to true happiness. Klal Israel, no missionot. Everybody should come home. We should be able to go to Yerushalayim and see the Holy Temple and not this, like, I don't know what is there. And, and serve God with true happiness and be happy from one another. Doesn't make a difference what your size of your hamaka or even if you're wearing one. Love one another. Love, happy with one another. And with this happiness, we're going to be able to merit full redemption. Asap. Chag Sukot Sameach Lal Yisrael.